These worms are doing what we thought was impossible, digesting what cannot be digested or decomposed. They can eat plastic. And this is what's left of a piece of styrofoam after a week of digesting it by these little creatures. They may be a key to solving our worldwide plastic disaster. But can they really be that key? This is huge news, especially knowing the true evil nature of plastic that doesn't allow it to be decomposed. For example, if we take natural substances, they will naturally be broken up by bugs and bacteria, turning them into water, oxygen and carbon, elements that become a part of nature all over again. With plastic, it's impossible. It takes 20 to 500 years for a plastic bottle to decompose, and it will only shrink in size. Plastic won't go away. This is a curse of a material we created to make our lives better. And there are a number of problems with that. There are some, a lot of things that we know. We know how water moves roughly. We know how salt moves. Uh, we know that our models have errors, but they're not too bad. But then when you come to under, trying to understand plastic, there are a number of different problems because it doesn't necessarily move the same way the water moves. As we've seen, it might sink, it might float. If the plastic is floating and the water comes together, or the water goes down, the plastic doesn't. That's why you end up with garbage patches. You've concentrated material. After an American inventor, John Wesley Hyatt, discovered a simplified process of creating plastic, it became a wonder material that took over the world. Some plastic products are light and flexible. Some can even stop a bullet, all thanks to polymers with atomic units that look like a chain. The chain, nothing could break down because of its strong bonding. And the fact that this little nasty worm is the first creature in existence that can break this chain down is a miracle. What's more surprising is it's the regular worm called a mealworm. You can actually buy them online and watch them grow into beetles as you feed them with plastic. However, it's not the organism itself that destroys it, but the bacteria inside of it that produces special enzymes. If we managed to isolate those enzymes and then produce them in bioreactors, they could enhance the recycling process and break the plastic down much faster than literal centuries. As good as everything sounds, the technology for this is not scalable yet and is really expensive. So it will take some time to make it real. What we really can do right now is to take a new approach to plastic. When I was looking for some nice pictures of the garbage patch, I found it labeled as a new continent in the Pacific. But I think it speaks a little bit to one of the issues that maybe is relevant to a broader question relevant to Chris's talk, and that is, We've been devil, bedeviled in the climate by people who say scientists aren't sure, so we don't do anything. That's right. And that's what we want to avoid. We, yeah. we want to know better what's right. going on, but at the same time, we want to take what actions we can now. Like stopping using it irresponsibly and throwing it out into nature. Worms can help us, but we humans should start with ourselves first.